Hello everybody, Coach Jeff here, owner and head coach of Training For Your Stockyards. We are a group fitness and lifestyle changing business located here in Haltham City, Texas. And uh, I wanna talk about the barbell back squat um, here today. And uh, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions about uh, back squatting or squatting. Um, and maybe uh, right now you have this belief that this exercise I'm about to demonstrate is bad for your knees or you can't do it uh, because you have something hurting from waist below. But I wanna show you that that is definitely not the case. And in fact, when you get this exercise down, the back squat is a wonderful exercise for strengthening the hips, the knees, and the ankle throughout all ages, right? So uh, the way that I like to coach the back squat is a low bar setting. So traditionally, maybe the way that you think of a squat or maybe the way that you're squatting or have seen it done is the individual will place the bar at the top of their neck, but I'm gonna show you why we don't coach that way and why I think that this will benefit everybody out there watching. What we do is a low bar. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of giving myself a hug, right? I'm, I'm reaching my arm around and I'm feeling for this bony part of my shoulder blade. That's called the spine of the scapula. So if you gotta press hard, you can feel that indention. That's where the barbell goes. Well, now why is that? There's always a why uh, behind the coaching cues and the lifts uh, here at Training for Warriors. And uh, that's because in most traditional lifts, your body's center of gravity will stabilize. So center of gravity is basically like right here, right midsection. Uh, it's gonna stabilize over your midfoot. Think of the arch of your foot. That's where your body's gonna always wanna kind of keep that center of gravity. So if I was a high bar back squat, okay, let's say I said with a high bar, you can already notice that the bar is well in front of my center of gravity, i.e. the arches of my feet. So what that means, is as we descend into the squat, we're gonna be recruiting more knee, right? More uh, quad dominance than we are on the backside. That's why it's called a back squat, right? So in a back squat, we actually want a forward lean so the bar stays over our midfoot. So let me show you. With a low bar, okay, that bar is in that position. Right now, you can notice that that bar is basically starting right over my midfoot, okay? so. Now that we've talked about the bar placement, okay, let's talk about how you get into that and then how you execute the squat. Before I do any of that, you gotta get rid of maybe what you're thinking of a traditional squat. Meaning most people, when they first start squatting, they're gonna have their toes straight ahead and they wanna think of a very upright torso. But that's not the case because we have to get parallel, right? Our quadriceps need to become parallel to the ground because at the bottom of a squat, when everything is parallel, then your adductors are stretched and the hamstrings, everything is stabilizing the hip and the knee joint. Whenever you um, are not able to achieve that full squatted position, then you leave slack in the muscles, which means joints like the knee joint are free to move around. And during a strength lift with however much weight you got on the bar, you don't want your joints making big movements like that, okay? So the way that you're gonna be able to get this bar into proper position, is you always want thumbs over the bar because you gotta have a straight wrist and you want really high elbows because essentially you want all the upper back musculature, your upper neck, right? The upper back, the rhomboids, the traps to be holding the weight on the bar, not the bony structures, okay? So when I set up, now again, this is gonna feel awkward, right? Um, and you may have to be doing some shoulder stretches, some shoulder mobility if you're real restricted up top to be able to get this bar in the right position. But when you do, even with knee issues, you can safely back squat because we're gonna load the hips and not the knees, okay? So I got my thumbs over the bar. I'm gonna palpitate. I'm gonna find where that bar is. Now it's both feet under the bar before you leave the J-hooks. You don't wanna leave in a staggered stance position. You wanna make sure you have full stability. Then you pop up, okay? Now you take a couple steps back and what you're gonna do is set your feet under the shoulders, so heels under shoulders and toes out. The next movement here is critical. Again, most people, they knee squat. They drop straight down. Again, you're gonna drive your hips back as if you're setting into a chair, then bend your knees, right? Keeping your chin tucked, you would hit parallel, they explode right back up. Hips go back, then you bend your knees, and then you explode right back up, okay? Now, when uh, entering the J-hooks, you always aim for the flat part and then drop down. 
If you aim for the J hook, you might miss it, and then all that weight, right? It's not a good, it's not a good scenario. So you always aim for the flat part of the J hooks, okay? Um, now, uh, yours might not look like that for a while, and that's okay. Um, you're gonna probably be having to work on mobility. Uh, you gotta work on you know shoulder mobility, hip mobility, stretching out your ankles as well. Um, I can do some extra videos if you guys really enjoyed this one on how you would modify uh, like elevating the heels or doing box squats if uh, you're still not able uh, to hit parallel. But again, guys, this is the low bar back squat. Uh, this is a wonderful total body exercise, but specifically geared towards strengthening the glutes, the hamstrings, and the quadriceps as well. So guys, I appreciate your time. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. Uh, like the video, share the video, and maybe tag some people in it that you think can benefit as well. Until next, guys. Until next time, guys, this is Coach Jeff signing out.